Good morning, guten morgen, magenda numaga, konnichiwa, bonjour. So it's actually sunny today. I think it's going to be 40, which is a nice change because we've had some cold days. And <clears throat> when I say cold, I'd, I'd say mornings are sometimes in the teens and it'll get up into the 30s, but because of the wind, uh, 30 doesn't feel like 30. <laughs> it feels like it feels like it's in the teens still. So um, I want to do several videos, I think, but uh, short videos. Hopefully this will be under five minutes long and I'll be as quick as I can. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really trying hard not to say um or I notice a lot of people use you know a lot too and or like they add like it is it is <laughs> so i uh, uh i say i try hard but then when i start talking it's you you're very uh it's uh hard to break old habits so anyways good morning uh recently I had let go one of my cleaning gigs. When I say recently, I mean the last day I cleaned for her was, I believe it was December 31st. And I had let this client know that if, in case she needs me for any emergency or training someone new, which I will be this up and coming Friday, I'm, I'm cleaning for her um, because I'm showing someone the the ins and outs of this house. Um, so, but I recently let go of this cleaning gig because, well, f first of all, it was very stressful cleaning for this particular person. It was using their house as an Airbnb. People were checking out at eleven or they're supposed to check out by 11. And then the next client or the next tenants check in at three o'clock. So I had a three and a half hour, it's four hours, but it never was four hours. I'd always start after 11. So I had like a three and a half hour window to clean a whole house. Uh, sometimes people were kind of messy cleaning two full bathrooms, two full-size beds where I had to wash the bedding and iron the bedding because the, the duvet covers were always wrinkly. That it, I thought it looked like the bed was dirty if it wasn't ironed, so I'd iron that. And I'd do that in three and a half hours, and I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> so... <clears throat> It was stressful because for me, I actually cared. I cared that the house was in order, that the house looked nice, that when people came in, um, that the one of the first things I'd like them to think of is, wow, this place is really clean. So I basically, I'm not gonna say deep cleaned the place because we could always do better, but I went, above regular cleaning. So I let go that job um, because it was stressful a little bit and because um, I didn't need to make the sort of money that I was making. That um, it's not important to me, like material things aren't important to me. That I can walk into a store and I have a want for nothing. And all glory to the Lord, because I used to love shopping at um, thrift stores. I always love shopping at thrift stores, but it's a bunch of things that it's just little things that I don't need. I mean, yes, I'd buy like a wooden rolling pin, but then I'm like, I don't make a lot of cookies from scratch or anything. Or... I don't need to roll out dough because I don't really do that. 
or I'd, I'd have all these things, blenders or something, and I'm like, I don't really blend anything. <laughs> Just extra, you know, decorations maybe too. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't into decor, but I mean little things that just collect dust basically. So that and I'd buy clothes and shoes like right now, me downsizing, right now I probably have 20 pairs of shoes, like five or six pairs of sneakers, a couple pairs of boots, rain boots, uh, whatever I just it's it sounds excessive because it is excessive even though I've cut down it's like who needs 20 pairs of shoes I don't I really don't or three winter jackets or something you know what I mean so anyways uh, if I make less money which now I make twelve hundred dollars less quitting that gig because I was making $125 a cleaning and I'd clean for her between 10 and 12 times a month. So cutting that job out, now I have to budget my money where I think about it things before I buy things now. When I worked for her, I just bought, I just went on Amazon, I'd drop $100 on Amazon buying silly things like not silly things but it's things like snacks like rice crackers and and uh black licorice and <laughs> i need to cut down on that as well you know i was i'm not gonna say that i was a glutton but it yeah it is a form of you know having all these extra things i was basically pretty spoiled and I'm not saying that I'm still not spoiled on some level, but I work hard and I, and I, I buy these little uh, things that, you know, it doesn't make me feel happier. It's, you know, it's not like buying rice crackers uh, really makes my day. <laughs> like, this doesn't fill that void that only Christ can fill, rice crackers. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the reason why I'm sharing this part of my testimony with you is I find that I'm not only being refined by the fire spiritually, gaining more wisdom about different things, but I'm also being refined um, where I'm changing, slowly changing different things in my life. And part of that is um, I, you know, I, I work less. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to pick up other cleaning jobs and, and, and spend time cleaning, doing other things. But it just, I don't find... Uh, I don't find value in monetary things. And the scripture that comes to mind, need my reading glasses. <laughs> the scripture that comes to mind is Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. It says, They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them. In the day of the wrath of the Lord, they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is, the, it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. So, I just realized this is probably a long video. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, there are truthers that are trying to convince their audience, their viewers, their followers. I call them followers because if you're actually listening to what they're saying and acting upon it and doing it, like, you know, changing their 401k and buying silver and gold, silver and gold is not going to save you. When the whole economic collapse happens, and it's going to happen, I'm not 
prophesying this. I mean, you can see it. It's going to happen where no matter what position that you think that you're in or you think that you're prepared for it, every single person is going to be hurting, even those who have more money than you or, or I have. That money is not going to save them. Their, their silver, their gold, their numbers on a computer, their investments, their whatever. It's not going to save them. Everyone is going to feel the, um, uh, the weight or they're going to feel the, I can't even come up with the word right now. <laughs> they're going to feel it. On some, it's going to affect them. It's going to hurt them. They're going to suffer as well because Again, um, their stockpile of weapons, say, what's that going to do? And what's the purpose of that? Are you, are you willing to hurt someone to, to keep your belongings? Is it worth it? Is it worth physically hurting someone to keep what you have? I, I, I never thought so, even before I became born again. I never thought it was worth, you know, hurting somebody. It was worth keeping something. I never valued it on that level. So whatever you have, um, think of it as it's worth giving away or it's worth sharing with other people that it's not worth dying for. It's not worth hurting someone else for. So in a sense, as I'm being refined by the fire and I'm letting go some of my work where I'm not making as much money, I'm learning how to adapt to going without in a sense. I'm still spoiled, okay? I'm not like depriving myself of anything, okay? But I'm also learning to value that what what are these things around me? I value that I have a wood stove to keep warm, a roof over my head, clothes, food, but it's not what fills me. My spiritual bread is what fills and that hunger, that need. I hope I plant a good seed. I love you and God bless.